reserving the right to object. Mr. President, uh, our colleagues, uh, this is a, uh, a very fluid situ situation, as we all know. And uh, certainly people, uh, Americans who are watching this from home, are, are confused about the, the parties. And, uh, and then when you overlay the politics on top of it, where you have a, a level of animus towards the commander in chief that there is at this point, it becomes very difficult to sort this, this out. So as chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, I want to try to uh, lay out some fundamentals here that we need to deal with. And uh, the, as, as has been pointed out by everyone, and I think everyone agrees, that the, that the situation on the ground in Syria is an incredibly uh, complex situation. And uh, it is difficult to understand and impossible to manage at some point uh, because of the fact that there are, that there are uh, dozens and dozens of, of tribal entities that uh, share uh, religious or, or cultural or, or tribal affiliations, either together or in opposition. Um, the result of that is the mess that we've had in, in Syria for so long. Now on top of that, uh, in northern Syria, we have a situation where the Kurds and the Turks are at odds with each other. This has happened just recently, and as everybody in this body uh, House and Senate, Republicans, Democrats, no. It is a very serious situation. But this is not new. The animosity and the fight between the Turks and the Kurds has been going on for centuries. Let me say that again. This fight between these two groups has been going on for centuries. Who are these two groups? Well, of course, first, we have the Turks on one side on the north, north uh, of the border who are uh, members of NATO, and are, and are, at the very least, theoretical allies of the United States, though in recent years uh, that alliance uh, uh, has been strained, uh, and that's an understatement to, of what the situation is. Recently, they, they uh, negotiated a, a deal with the Russians to buy S-400 missiles, uh, which is a, a horrendous problem for a, for a member of NATO uh, NATO was formed, of course, to push back against the Russians, and now you have a member of NATO that is, that is uh, engaging with the Russians in this fashion. This has caused us real grief. Those of us who deal with it have dealt with it for months. Uh, we've been pressing the, the Turks as hard as we can about the mistake that they've made and the consequences that it's going to have. Uh, they have an order for F-35s. Uh, they, uh, they make a number of parts uh, for the F-35. We have told them clearly in no uncertain terms for months. They can have the F-35s, or they can have the S-400s, but they can't have both. Uh, they have insisted that they can. That is simply not going to happen. I think maybe they're starting to believe that. Fast forward to the point we have now where the Turks amassed 30,000 troops on the border with Syria, ready to come in uh, and take on the Kurds who had moved into the northern part uh, of Syria due to the uh, failed state status uh, of, uh, uh, of Syria. To say that the President of the United States is responsible for, for this is simply uh, a political statement that isn't true. You can dislike the Commander-in-Chief, you can dislike the calls that he makes, but this is a, a war that has been going on between these two groups for centuries. It was going to happen. Uh, the fact that uh, Erdogan had amassed 30,000 troops uh, on the border was a clear indication uh, that it was going to go forward. Uh, we had about 28 troops between the, the two uh, standing armies, and admittedly, the President of the United States pulled those uh, 28 uh, troops out of harm's way. Uh, in any event, w w you can argue about what, ha what got us here, what the triggering factor was, whether it was or wasn't going to happen anyway, but what you can't argue about is what the situation is today. There isn't anyone in this body that would disagree that this is a very serious situation. Turkey is alone on this, by the way, uh, with the possible uh, exception of the, of the Qataris. They are alone on this. The world has been watching this, condemning what Turkey is doing. They have done a cross-border incursion, and they are, are, uh, are facing their age-old enemy, uh, the Kurds, inside of Syria. So what do we do about this? Well, the House has passed uh, a matter that... Uh, uh, that the, uh, that the uh, minority leader has talked about and wanted to pass. 
Uh, Senator Paul has brought, brought his idea to the floor. But I want to tell you that the Foreign Relations Committee has been w working on this since it blew up. I want to thank my staff, and I want to thank Senator Menendez's staff, uh, the ranking men member, who pulled an all-nighter last night, putting together a piece of legislation and an all-morninger uh, to get to the point where we are. This piece of legislation is going to be dropped very quickly. Um, uh, Rich Menendez is a bipartisan piece of legislation that addresses the issues that all of us are concerned about. Uh, it addresses uh, the issues with Turkey. It addresses the issues with the Kurds. It addresses the issues that the, that the minority leader uh, addressed regarding the prisoners uh, that are being, the ISIS prisoners that are being held. It is a good piece of legislation. Um, it, it is going to have numerous, and I mean numerous, co-sponsors uh, to the bill from both sides of the aisle. So with that in mind, uh, I am going to enter an objection to Senator Paul's uh, piece of legislation. Uh, not because uh, I object to it uh, as it stands by itself, but because we have a comprehensive piece of legislation that does address this, that uh, has, is the result of consultation between uh, both the majority and the minority and the administration to get us a bill that can actually become law. And uh, I, from my own standpoint, uh, I'm always at a point where I want to reach an objective. I want to get to a result. Uh, Senator Paul's and the, the other legislation cannot become law. This bipartisan piece of le legislation, Rich Menendez, that, ad that addresses this very, very serious issue can become law. So as a result of that, uh, uh, Mr. President, I object.